Hi guys and welcome back to Pass and Move and for today's episode we'll be covering Espanol in our tactics and team guide and of course as the title suggests we'll be, we will be covering uh, both the, the tactics and the, in terms of team guide what that means is of course uh, you know which players to keep, which players to try and build around, maybe which players need to be moved on, air departments that need to be worked on uh, in the squad itself. Of course tactically what we're talking about is just how to set up your team uh, in the best way possible to get the most out of this uh, Espanol side. And of course Espanol 7th is table uh, when the you know league initially starts but of course that's just alphabetically. In terms of a season preview they expect you to be a mid-table team, 10th, exactly 10th. Um, but you know if you perform well you could possibly squeeze into Europa League spots so it's something to try and aim for uh, and obviously try and avoid getting caught up in a uh, relegation battle. But in terms of the board themselves, they also ex expect a mid-table uh, performance, so uh, you know it's good to see the expectations and, and uh, pre uh, predictions, I suppose, match up well, because uh, not all, they don't always do that in uh, FM or in you know clubs, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that helps you, of course, to try and perform. Uh, one of the first things I'd like to do is actually go into my staff, my coaching team, and try and figure out who has the best judgment of ability. Of course, judgment of potential is important as well. But I'm trying to find out who the best players at my, of my, who the, yeah, who the best players are currently at the moment, uh, and not in the future, because you know I'm trying to build a team with the players I've got at the moment. Um, and of course, you've got two options here. 14 is not a bad attribute to have or a bad number, and uh, one of them is a coach and one of them is an assistant manager. Generally, you do want to rely on your assistant manager more than anyone else. Head of youth development is a decent one to rely on. Uh, coaches aren't too bad either, but mainly because you work, you know, your assistant manager is such an important person to you. Uh, it's good to have, you know, as you do in Espanol here, uh, an assistant manager who actually is quite decent. So yeah, we'll be trusting Antonio's uh, judgment when it comes to our players. The next thing I like to do is actually go into the team report, go into squad depth. Uh, but first, you can have a very quick overview and see what your strengths and weaknesses are. So as you can tell, uh, you don't have any huge weaknesses other than a lack of depth, which is kind of normal for a mid-table team. Uh, and you know, I feel like FM, no matter how many numbers you've got really, there's always an issue with depth. So I, don't, I wouldn't worry too much about it, but of course it's just something to keep an eye on. And apparently your scouting staff needs some work, but you can also have a look at your strengths and try and play into them. Uh, apparently you've got a bunch of, bunch of defensive depth, so that's good to see. Uh, but really it's work rate, teamwork and youth prospects, apparently that's the best thing. So I go into squad depth and I just set everything on current ability and I, sh I don't pick a particular formation, I put it on all positions and the player's best role, so it's not that I'm squeezing anyone into different roles, and I just want to see how the players are in the best position in their best roles. And of course the opinion is of the staff member that you trust, which is what we said Antonio. So as you can tell, quite early you've got a number of uh, strikers who are very decent for you, 3.5 stars is not a bad one. Uh, you generally do want to try and build your team around players who have 3.5 stars or 4 stars and above of course. Uh, uh, because those are ones that you're likely to be your star players. Three stars and two and a half, not so much. Uh, you know, you don't want to do any huge decision making, changing your tactics just based on someone who's only got two and a half stars. It doesn't make too much difference uh, or too much sense, really. But yeah, so you've got three strikers who seem to be really good. You've got uh, Leo here who can actually even play on the right wing with equally as good um, ability. We've got uh, Sergio Garcia, who can he actually plays an attacking midfielder as well, but you can force him to the striker position. Uh, you've got Pablo Piatti as well as on the left wing. He's a, apparently best player at your squad, apparently, as well. He can play in the left wing too. Um, you've got, you know, uh, it seems like you've got a versatile player. So there's a number of ways you can actually take this team in if you want, a number of directions. and. Uh, and yeah, you've got one decent central midfielder, most of your strength comes in the defensive midfield strata though, you've got uh, not too much strength in defensive depth apparently, like, uh, well I mean you've got a bunch of defensive depth but you don't have too much ability I suppose in, in comparison to the other positions and so it might be a bit of an area of concern, um, which seems to make no sense based on the overview which said that you've got good defensive depth. Um, Goalkeeper, you've got a very strong one in uh, Diego Lopez. So Roberto's currently on loan. I'm not sure if you can call him back. Um, let's have a look here. You can't recall from loan anyways. Uh, but Diego Lopez should definitely do the job. So your best players at the moment are Diego Lopez and Pablo Piatti. So it's just something to keep an eye on. But yeah, very generally, you can tell that this team can go in a bunch of different directions. You could probably play a 4-2-3-1 with two DMs. Or if you want to force it, a 4-2-3-1 with uh, two central midfielders. But of course, some of these players won't be at their best. 
Uh, you could possibly get away with playing a 4-4-2 if you would like. Uh, and uh, that's kind of what we've gone with. I feel like I want to bring out the best out of my strikers and push them up as far as, far as possible and try and bring out the best out of my team. And at the same time, still play with wingers. So we've gone with a 4-4-2, uh, but a variation on it. So we've gone with a... It says here 4-2-4, but I would reckon it's still 4-2-4. Uh, but yeah, two DMs to make up for the crazy attacking quartet we've got here. Uh, I thought the best thing to do is... Uh, just bring out, like I mentioned, the best out of our strikers. So we've got Moreno and Sergio. And then the third one who he said was really good that we can also play at the right is Leo. And so this way we managed to keep all three and a half star players in the same 11. And of course, we still got Piatti on the left as a four star rated player. And we managed to squeeze in two DMs to make up for, of course, the lack of defensive depth. Uh, and, you know, we don't have the best defenders like it was mentioned. And at the same time, it's just because the, the, the top four are just very attacking in such a way that you have to be careful uh, and uh, make up for it by having two DMs. And I, th I think it just made the most sense. Uh, so, yeah, in terms of the type of play we're trying to go for, it seemed to make sense to uh, play a short possession style of football. Not necessarily in terms of uh, the formation. The formation isn't necessarily the best for keeping possession. Um, but you know, it should still make do. I'm not expecting to have 60-70% possession, that's not really what I'm aiming for. It's just because it felt like it was the best way to bring out the best out of the squad. We've got a Rodeman Tor, for example, who uh, naturally passes shorter, crosses less often, uh, you know, that sort of stuff. We've got a complete forward as well, an attack, a false nine, an inside forward. All these players, uh, they don't necessarily you know, play the direct style of football, which is crossing a lot, dribbling a lot, all that sort of business and shooting a lot. So it's just it kind of made sense to go with the, uh, in order to bring out the best out of Piatti as well, especially because he's a rhythm and tour uh, to play a possession type of football. And it helps because we're also playing on a counter mentality. So we're not being too expansive, not too attacking, even though, we're, you know, the formation, uh, this front four is quite attacking, like we mentioned. Uh, and so it just made the most sense. So it's really simple. I don't have, you know, too much mentality, uh, too much uh, team instructions. Rather, I just generally for possession footballs play on counter or defensive and uh, just play on sh shorter passing. And uh, my understanding is when you play possession football, it's not risky football. And so it makes sense for you to play on a counter mentality because, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's less risky than it is on the count uh, control and attacking and so on. And so... Uh, playing defensive or counter seems to make the most sense and playing on shorter passing as well uh, for overall possession football. We're also looking for, um, you know, when we do cross, because, uh, you know, we don't want to cross too much, we want to try and work the ball to box, but when we do, we want it to come from the byline and that's where this wing back on attack comes in. Uh, but yeah, I've also set the team instruction an additional one, which is dribble less because, you know, we've got an inside forward who dribbles more, false nine doesn't necessarily, but... Uh, complete forward does. I think the wing back also dribbles more. Rudimentor, I'm not sure. I don't think it does, yeah. Um, and so it just kind of made sense to just keep an eye on that excessive dribbling. And uh, that's kind of it. Because possession football, all you want to do is you want to avoid dribbling, you want to avoid crosses, and you want to avoid people who shoot a lot. Uh, and so it's just kind of made sense to uh, hold that back a little bit. Um, but yeah, so uh, the whole point is to try and uh, fit the players in the best roles and the, and the most natural roles to bring out the best out of them and at the same time not harm the overall tactic. And as you can see, we've done that relatively well because we've got a bunch of fully natural greens here. Uh, and of course, we've got a full back on support and Aaron just to complement the Rodeman tour. Wing back on attack to overlap the inside forward. We've got Sergio Garcia as a false nine, uh, playing a direct partnership with Moreno, who's best as a complete forward on attack. And we've got the two defensive midfielders, one on defense, one on support. Uh, and actually, I've done this the wrong way around because it makes more sense to have the defensive one covering for the wing back on support. So let's just adjust that. And uh, yeah, you've got the two central defenders, uh, Naldo and Duarte. Uh, and I think Naldo's uh, the only reason he's not fully is because he wants to be a cover, but we don't need that. We're not necessarily playing a high line, we're playing a standard goalkeeper, so it doesn't make sense to play him on cover. We just want an unusual straight line, and uh, that's kind of it. Uh, you could possibly get away with it, I think, if you, if you wanted to play. Duarte is a stopper and Naldo is a cover, but or even just play Naldo as a cover, but I reckon I'm just a fan of a straight across line, so 
uh, I would keep it as is. But yeah, this is just the best way to bring out the best out of the squad. Like I mentioned, there were a couple of other formations that you could possibly have gone with, uh, but I feel like they weren't, they wouldn't have been as best. Uh, and uh, you know, we're trying to fit in the best eleven players into the same starting eleven, and I feel like this was the best way to successfully do that and still maintain the tactics. Uh, so of course. You know, you can go through roles one by one, but I feel like now we can actually have a look at the players and see who who should potentially move on, who you should try and invest in and all that sort of business. Uh, so now that we know our formation, we can also tell how many players we need. So in general, I like to have a squad of 22 players, uh, a starting 11 with, uh, you know, uh, leading star or world class ability, and then a backup 11 of youngsters who have potential to become leading star and world class players, but are also ready for the first division that you're in. Or, well, I mean, not the first division, whatever division you're in, but they're ready for it. Uh, and I feel like that's the perfect balance so that the experienced players, the starting 11 players, uh, you know, are kept on their toes by the youngsters and the youngsters are hungry for first team action, but won't complain if you if you leave them out, uh, you know, because you're relying on your starting 11 players. So I feel like that's the best balance, you know, there's always someone moving in, moving on and that sort of business. And uh, so, yeah, this is our starting 11 and the backup 11 are here. But uh, in terms of numbers, we might be a little bit short. Actually, we were over. So if we consider Roberto's not here, we can actually move him down to the under-19 squad just to get him out of the way. That leaves us with 12 players, so we do still have an extra player. But the question is, do we have the right numbers in the right areas and the right quality in the right areas as well? Uh, so now that we know our formation, we can actually go through each player individually and uh, talk about each department. So Diego Lopez, like we mentioned, is our main starting 11 goalkeeper. Tony's not actually the staff member we're trusting, it's uh, Antonio. And Antonio judges him to be a good player for most first division sides. So considering that you are a mid-table team, this is the kind of minimum uh, rating that you want to aim for. Uh, and so Diego Lopez fits that, but eventually you do want to have, of course, a leading star or world-class goalkeeper to deal with. So at, at the moment, Diego Lopez suits us quite well. And it's good to see that his backup is also a very capable player. You've got pa Paolo Lopez, who's decent for most first division sides. So like I mentioned, he's ready for the division and he's got potential to be a good first team, uh, first division goalkeeper in the future. And of course, if you do play him plenty of times, he can potentially be a leading goalkeeper as well. So that would suit you. Uh, and this is basically the perfect balance that I'm talking about. You've got one who's, you know, he's knows he's gonna be a starter, who's comfortable, who's good for the first team, who's perfect for you in terms of ability. And you've got the backup who's, you know, uh, fine with being a backup in Paolo Lopez, he's a youngster with potential and he can eventually uh, replace Diego Lopez uh, when the time comes. So this is exactly what you're going to try and aim for. In terms of right backs, you've got two of them here in Javi Lopez and Victor Sanchez. We mentioned that Victor Sanchez is the first team player and as you can mention, most comfortable as a wing back. He can play in defensive midfield and central midfield if necessary, but we need the most in the right back spot and so we've gone with that and of course the wing back on attack is what we chose for him. But his backup is not good enough. Uh, second leading second division player, Javi Lopez, is not the type of player we want, especially because he is 31 years of age. The good news for you though is that he's only on 10k, uh, so you're not spending too much on him for no reason. You've got high determination and decent leadership, uh, so it kind of makes sense why he's still at the team, but you really do want to move him on for a better youngster with potential. Uh, but at the moment, in terms of your first team, it's not an area of direct concern because there might be other areas that you know needs more significant investment. So uh, speaking of that area, you've got three centre backs and you need four, like I mentioned, two players per position. You've got two centre backs in the starting eleven, so that means you need four overall. You only got three here, which is a bit of a concern. You've got Oscar, like I mentioned, your first teamer, but he's the only decent player for most first division sides. So again, you might want to bring in an actual good centre back for your team and make Oscar your new backup. Uh, you've also got Naldo, like we mentioned, who's a sec second division side player. So it's just something that you, yeah, it's a bit of a concern, essentially. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's not even ready for the division, which is worrying. So like we mentioned, the defense seems to be the area that needs investment more than anything else. Sergio Sanchez, the player on loan, is also a second division player. So your center back area definitely needs investment. You do need a fourth center back anyways, might as well make it a good one and then eventually build on the backups and uh, improve your squad depth. But the immediate starting 11 players does need some investment in center back. So I would say top priority is bringing in an actual center back. You can have a look at the other fullbacks here just quickly to see if any of them can play center back. So you do have here Mario Hermoso who can play as a center back apparently, but if we have a look at his attributes, He's not the greatest. I think he would make a decent uh, backup, 
Uh, and just because you've got three left backs, really, you don't necessarily need him. Uh, but jumping reach of, of 10 and heading 11 is not too great. At least he's good in terms of his tackling and all his other attributes. Uh, but I would reckon, you know, uh, for now, he adds to the numbers. He's a youngster with potential, but not the best potential. You don't want to be aiming for just decent first division potential. You want to be aiming for better, like we mentioned before. Um, but, you know, if you don't really have the money, he can make do for the season. Uh, but yeah, still, the centre-back area is the one that needs some investment. Aaron's your first choice uh, left-back, and he is, again, not the best of options. Not only is he susceptible to injuries, but was also a second division footballer. Uh, and so definitely not someone that you want to really have as your first team. Uh, he does have a ton of potential by the looks of it. He can definitely be a star player for you. Uh, but at the moment, he's not even ready for first division football, and so it's a bit of a concern that he's your first choice. Uh, Villa, Villa here is also a second division player, and he's not even going to improve either, so it's just another player that you want to try and move on and bring in a youngster with potential. Uh, again, like we mentioned, defensive depth is a huge issue uh, for your squad at the moment. So if we move into midfield, you've really got a couple of options here. Esteban Granero sounds so familiar. Yeah, he was at Real Madrid, wasn't he? Um... You've got a bunch of numbers here, basically. You've got six of them. You really just need four because you're playing with two defensive midfielders. Um, by the looks of it, you've got a couple of central midfielders who might not necessarily fit as defensive midfielders, but your starting 11 players or your best players fit into the defensive midfield strata, and so it makes most sense to cater to them. Uh, so we talked about, you know, let's have a quick look at them and see how they will be, if they, we can use them in any other positions, for example. By the looks of it, not really. Granero could possibly be attacking midfielder, but we're not playing an attacking midfielder. And he's not too comfortable playing as a defensive midfielder. Uh, so it's a bit of a concern. You've got six players. So the good news is that if you do move on two of them, whichever two will decide at the moment, um, uh, you can try and invest that money elsewhere in other areas of squad, like I mentioned, defensive midfield possibly. But at least you know you've got the numbers. Uh, Javi Fuego is your first choice, who's a decent player for most first division sides, so you can definitely try and improve on that. But David Luis Lopez is uh, a good player for most first division sides, and so he suits your first team um, criteria, I suppose. And so, you know, he needs a better defensive midfielder alongside him, I suppose. Um, a better option to help him out and uh, be the actual leading player for the team. Um, in terms of backups though, it looks like uh, Pape probably is the most natural defensive midfielder, ball winning midfielder as well, quite suit your team in defensive midfield. He's got very good attributes like teamwork, uh, aggression, that sort of business. Um, but the problem is like you've seen here, he's just a decent player for most first division sides and so you want a bit better uh, backups who are youngsters with potential so that they can eventually replace your first teamers and prove to be better options. Um, but Granero, for example, is just a second division player, so you should be trying to move him on anyways, even though he doesn't suit your team. But like Sergi Dardar, uh, who's on loan, um, but if he doesn't go into defensive midfield, he can play there, so it's very decent. He's got pretty good attributes in truth. Uh, and he'll just offer you more creative options. I don't think you should necessarily get rid of him. Uh, he's definitely a better option than Granero and possibly even Pape uh, Diop. Uh, and if we just have a look at Mark here, he's a second division player anyway. So if you send Mark uh, unknown possibly or even to your Espanol B and just keep these four players here that we have highlighted, sorry, uh, then that's a very decent you know, set of midfielders, but it can definitely still do with some uh, better depth and uh, better options. Uh, but at the moment, you've got the numbers and you've got decent players as well. No one who's really second division ability like in the, in the defensive midfield, uh, defensive areas. All right, so that moves us on to the wingers. We've got Leo and Pablo Piatti as the first choice. Uh, we've got a right winger and an attacking midfielder as well here, so we'll just have a look at who can play where. Uh, but Leo, the first choice, is a good player for most first division sides and has a hint more potential to him. Uh, to be honest, at the age of 24, it's unlikely he's going to actually fulfill that potential. But if he does, he's going to be such an important player for your team. And I can, as you can see, he can play as a striker if need be, but I've moved him out onto his most natural role, which is an inside forward on the right, and he seems to enjoy it most. He's either footed as well, uh, attributes very suited to the role, so he should still do a job for you. At the same time, allows you to squeeze in the two strikers that we mentioned earlier. Um, but yeah, Pablo Piatti, another left winger, good player for most first division sides. We're trying to bring out the best out of our strikers or our forward players uh, to make up for our issues at the back. 
And having two defensive midfielders, of course, in the team should also help out with our issues at the back too. But yeah, Piatti is very comfortable as a Rodimator or as a winger. Uh, but I wasn't too much of a fan of him as a winger, not because of his attributes. He can very much do the role. He's also left-footed, which is perfect. But the problem is his trait of cutting inside from the left wing uh, does not help as a winger. You want him to be stuck to that wing as much as possible. And so I thought, you know, instead of trying to stop him or training him to stop cutting inside from the left wing, I could just play him as a Rodomantor, which he's very capable of as well and would suit the possession football anyways. Uh, you also got Hernan Perez, like we mentioned. So he's uh, a decent player for most first division sides, very decent option. The problem is he's a winger and we're not looking for someone who provides crosses because that doesn't help with possession football. Uh, I guess you could probably retrain him as a Marauder Mentor. In the side forward, not so much because he is right footed. He'll be cutting in onto his weaker foot, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, but if you do switch him around to the left wing, playing him as inside forward on there seems to be a very decent option. He's a natural there too, um, and uh, I guess a decent option, def decent player. Uh, but of course, like we mentioned, better youngsters with potential are the role that you want to work towards. Uh, Jose as well, Manuel Duardo is uh, either footed and attacking midfielder. Really, you're going to have to retrain him. Uh, he can play as an inside forward on the left and possibly on the right as well. Uh, but we do need him a bit more on the right and so if you just retrain him there he's a very decent backup as well uh, good player for most first division sides actually but the problem is of course there's no space for him in that front four uh, and so you know just retrain him as a right winger and uh, he's a happy to be a rotational player anyways and he'd be a very good backup uh, to your current star which is Leo uh, that leaves you with your striker so you've got three and you need four so really uh, the most pressing area of concern in your current squad is actually your striker you need a you need a striker before you can try and invest anywhere else so if you do move on some of the central midfielders that we talked about uh, then you can invest that money into a backup striker uh, with potential uh, Moreno and Garcia represent your striking options uh, Moreno as you can see is a fan favorite as well as a good player for most first division side so he is the player that you kind of aim for uh, Sergio as well like I mentioned good player but you do have to keep an eye on his susceptibility to injuries in terms of their backup their only backup Alvaro Vasquez a very poor one susceptible to injuries and just a second division player uh, it doesn't make too much sense to hold on to him. He's got very good attributes in fairness to him and he can play as a complete field on attack which is what we're looking for. Um, but at the moment it just doesn't make too much sense to uh, have him uh, as a backup. But you know you need the numbers so you can keep him from now and just bring in a better youngster with potential as your fourth striker. Uh, and eventually move on Vasquez once you get the chance to. In terms of your budget you've only got 4 million so it is a, you know, a bit of a concern. Uh, and so you have to be very careful about where you invest your money. Uh, but like I mentioned, my suggestion is your best option is to try and actually bring in a striker because uh, it's the most, it's the area that you actually need the number in more than anywhere else. Even though there's huge lack of depth in in the defense, and actually in, even not even just depth wise, your actual starting level in your defense needs some work. Uh, but you do need to m ensure that you've got the numbers first, and then make sure you've got the quality second um but yeah that's kind of it so i think we've pretty much covered everything if you're trying to figure out how to work towards an actual possession tactic eventually you can definitely work towards a bit of a 4-3-3 you know there's a reason why that tactic works so well uh, for barcelona and that's pretty much because your players will cover every inch of uh, the pitch when you play that formation. So if I have just a quick look here, if we switch everyone's roles, you would see that's pretty much green everywhere, and that helps you, of course, keep possession a bit more. Uh, and like I mentioned, you're trying to avoid players who cross too much, who who dribble too much, and who um, shoot too often. You know, players who have the shoot more often instruction. So you want to look for players who dribble less, who um, uh, cross less often and who shoot less often and so roles like that such as the inside forward for example they do dribble more but at least they cross less often if you went for an advanced playmaker for example might suit you on the right instead because they shoot less often they uh, don't they cross less often as well and they don't dribble too much either so advanced playmaker on support and a rudimentor on the left seems to be a perfect option in terms of the strikers uh, a lot of them do dribble and all that sort of business so maybe if you do if you went with a a poacher, for example, would be a very decent option. They don't cross, they don't shoot too often, all that sort of business. They don't dribble either. Uh, a false nine seems to be a decent one. Target man and support is also a very decent option because they dribble less as well. But of course, the problem with that is that you'd have to deal with your players lobbing the ball forward to him quite often. 
Uh, defensive uh, forward on support seems to be a decent one too, but I feel like in terms of possession football, he's not too important, and uh, you could be, you'd be better off with better other options. Central midfield, uh, you can go with uh, maybe a Mesler on support or even on attack, either one to be the one who supports your striker, and then if you go with a player like a a box-to-box -box midfielder, for example, and then in defensive midfield, you can go with someone who's just a full-out anchor man would probably be your best bet, uh, and that way it would be a very decent set up to your team of course with the actual tactic that we set up mentioned earlier i forgot to mention that you should have your fullback on support crossing less often we talked about how we want crosses coming in from the byline and fullbacks on support are the best support option for rodham and tour but at the same time they cross from deep so if you just tell them cross less often it'll stop that from happening uh, as much as uh, you know possible uh, you could definitely go with a ball playing defender as well but uh, they do play risky passes so it's just something to keep an eye on um, but definitely a decent shout as well if you wanted to uh, and this is kind of the tactic that you want to eventually build towards um, but like I mentioned several options in the in, in the striker department you could probably go with a poacher false nine I feel like a false nine is a very decent one to go with and uh, as you can see uh, you know co conventional or not conventional sorry it's a lone striker sort of role and so he is a lone striker and so it makes the most sense uh, to try and play him and see how it goes but as you can see very decent greens of course some of them are because the players aren't naturals in that position but yeah if you eventually build to a 433 of this type of manner you'd have a very decent team of possession football and you can get rid of that dribble less instruction too uh but yeah i think that's pretty much it we've covered everything so uh you know if you did enjoy the video of course please hit the like button and subscribe for more daily football manager 2018 content uh, and of course leave your thoughts in the comment section below tell me why you think it would work why you, you think it wouldn't work what you did like what you didn't like uh, I'd love to hear it all and of course once again thank you all guys very much for watching